Check out the link here. So, oh boy, what a day in the market. Papa Pal spoke and he gave the market exactly what they wanted. Remember, I told you to listen to that man and see what he said. And there was one question in particular I told you I wanted to hear, and it was the first question out the gate. So we're going to get into that. It was, and it was something he said. I don't know if it was a Freudian slip or he meant to say it. And it basically, that's another the injection for the market to hear. They're like, yes, we got this one right. And so, you know, we're going to go into that the charts which is one thing happening that's very very critical and then you know at the end here i'm going to show you some things that are happening that just show you man the consumer must be way stronger than we thought or way stronger than most people thought right and i'm gonna show you why and i want to thank somebody because they put it in the comments last night so i'll research this for you and pulled it up but here is the first question out the gate i told you somebody better ask him about financial conditions loosening up so much it's basically like they hadn't done any rate hikes according to the market, right? And so it's the first one out the gates, and this is where he had his chance. This is where I told you. Listen to the message he's trying to send. He had a chance right here to stomp this market down if he wanted to and get it back under control to start pushing down commodities and everything else and risk assets and everything else. And here's what he had to say. Uh, as you know, financial conditions have loosened since the fall with bond yields falling, uh, which has also brought down mortgage rates. Uh, and the stock market posted a solid gain in January. Does that make your job of combating inflation harder? And could you see lifting rates higher than you otherwise would to offset the increase in, or to offset the easing of financial conditions? So it is important that fin overall financial conditions continue to reflect the policy restraint that we're putting in place in order to bring inflation down to 2%. And of course, financial conditions have tightened very significantly over the past year. Uh, I would say that our focus is not on short-term moves, but on sustained changes to broader financial conditions. And it is our judgment that we're not yet at a sufficiently restrictive policy stance, which is why we say that we expect ongoing hikes will be appropriate. Of course, many things affect financial conditions, uh, not just our policy. Um, and we will take into account overall financial conditions along with many other factors as we, as we set policy. And the market heard that and went, okay. Well, that's rocket fuel, right? He's, he's saying we can go. This is great. And as soon as he said it, he started speaking like right here in his little monologue thing. He answered the question about right there. And then boom, see you later, baby. Off to the races we went. And, you know, if you wanted to stomp it down, like he really wanted to get control back of this market, all he had to simply say was, well, they can keep loosening those conditions all they want. That's going to force us to keep tightening even more. All right. That they can stop doing it and we can get this whole show over with a lot quicker. That's all he had to say, but he didn't, right? He just gave that little political answer, same stuff he always says. I mean, he almost put me to sleep listening to the man, right? But that's what it was, right? And here's the other piece. Here's what he said. Again, I don't know if this was a slip, but remember, the market is forward thinking and is always trying to anticipate this thing, which is what you see happening now. So we, you know, we've raised rates four and a half percentage points, and we're talking about a couple of more rate hikes to get to that level we think is appropriately restrictive and once he said that again rocket fuel for the market just absolutely skyrocketed again i don't know if he said that on purpose or he meant to say i don't know what he was trying to do there but remember i just did a members video detailing this showing him on the charts is what i'm talking about because this has happened in the past multiple times okay the market tries to anticipate this that's what they're doing now with that statement right there I'm pretty sure if he was playing poker, he just showed him the hand, right? And so I think at the end, he it, 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 he was trying to clarify. And, well, in March, later on, you know, we're going to show you what our forward thinking is, whether or not they're going to increase, like whether it be over five and a half, six, whatever, on their dot plots and all that stuff. Again, why didn't they update them for this meeting? Why not just do it now, right? You've seen the financial conditions loosening. Why not do it now? Mm -mm. Now, we, we, we postponed that till March. Again, if you were trying to be serious and, and rein this whole thing in, you would update it today and put it out, right? And unless what you're telling us is you're just not going much higher anyway, right? Because that's what he said right there. There's a couple more, 25 basis point hikes. And again, uh, I told you guys, follow that guy on Twitter I told you about. I told you he called this. He called the 75. He called the 50 because he's getting fed info from the Fed. And so I don't want to hear anybody talk about any more about, well, the Fed might be do this. The Fed has proven they do not like to surprise the market. And remember, you got to keep this in consideration. I told you this before, and this is just this is just true. It is about the velocity of the rate hikes 
not the destination. It's about the journey, not the destination. My wife always tells me because I'm a destination guy. She's a journey person, right? But it's about the rate hikes. When they start doing those 75 basis point hikes, what happens to the market? Shock the system. Oh my goodness. Boom. What happened when they started doing the 50? All of a sudden they dropped down to 50 and then they, and they knew we were going to do 25 because it was already leaked out to the press. It was already anticipated. What happened? The market starts turning, right? Even though the the, in, the destination hadn't changed, didn't matter. They, it's the velocity of the rate hikes, okay? That's important to understand that. And so now going into the charts, this is important to understand here, guys. One, got the golden cross, right? It's within grasp. It's not that far away. It does look that way, but it's not. Got this gap right above or right up against. We actually end up testing it today, and we're just sitting right below it, right? The other thing to look at is there's that uh, August high right there, which I talked about in the SPY. I'm going to go ahead and put me a trend line right here. I don't have to draw it anymore. and do these videos for you. Set me an alert on that because that is the next goal right there for the market is try to break that right there. Another bullish move if that's the case. One right below it just in case. I don't really know if this will be seen as resistance, but we'll put that one there just in case as well. And, you know, if you look at the RSI, getting a little frothy in my opinion, but again, it can go into oversold. Again, I think things are due for a pullback right now. The short term trend is up right now with higher highs, higher lows. Okay. So that's something to keep in mind. And then another thing you can see happen right here. I'm going to draw this trend on here just for the heck of it. But you can see, I mean, that is resistance turning to support basically. That's what you're looking for. And then hold that line right there. So you could see a retest of that line. And that would actually be a healthy thing if you saw that. Because I would definitely confirm it. But, you know, you can see right here on a shorter time frame, that support line where it was resistance, boom, flipped up, tagged it, and then, bam, just took off right up against, there it is, the gap. Again, it's like a movie, right? They like to leave us in suspense for the next day to see if we can fill the gap or are we going to come back down. Again, the SPY, this double pop played out perfectly. You can see it hit the target, started creating that trend line right there, moving up. Again, look at what's happening. You got your... Uh, 50 and 200 right there touching so if tomorrow we go up you're gonna get your golden cross either tomorrow or the next day broke through right there that level i was telling you about 4100 the double top level and then here is the august level same thing you just saw in the nasdaq 100 so you know i'll go ahead and draw a trend line there set my alert and everything that'll be the next target and we're only like five percent off that so at this rate in february if we keep moving up again higher highs higher lows and that's going to get broken as well. I don't think it's going to be straight up, obviously. you got to start testing and getting rejected and stuff. And then if you look at IWM, you know, what do you see happening? Right there, same thing happened. Double top played out perfectly. There was a target, created that trend line. It's broken out of that chop box now. Uh, once again, retested, moved off above it. It's already got this golden cross a few days ago, as I told everybody. So, you know, that's bullish. Some people think it's bearish. It don't mean it's going to go straight up. It just means at some point now we got to consolidate, get a nice healthy pullback, and then we can move up, right? And the crazy thing is it's only 3% away from its August highs, as you can see right there. And again, I'll draw my trend line, set my alert, and have it ready to go. And then Tesla. Oh, boy. And once the market started roaring, Tesla just absolutely skyrocketed, busted right through that 180 area right there. And then looking at the short time, you can see that's what I'm talking about. When the market took off, that's when Tesla just went see you later and went absolutely crazy. And 180 just right through it. I mean, I almost got to 180, what was it, 2, 180, 2.50 or something, I think was the high of the day. 7% move. That is crazy for a large cap stock. But again, it is Tesla, and that's kind of how this stock moves. And so now we get to see if it actually can hold that 180 level. Because one thing to keep in mind is, we look at this, you got a gap right above there, around 192, I believe it is. And so all gaps like to fill, and then you'll see another double top resistance level right there. Uh, right around the 197 area. And with Tesla, also something to pay attention to is the moving averages, right? You got the 50 is starting to flatten out, wants to turn up. You still got, you know, obviously the 100, 200 are pretty rough, but the 100 is sitting right above that gap as well, which it'll keep, uh, it'll basically flatten out right at the top of that gap, which, you know, I can definitely see that gap getting filled pretty quick if we keep moving up. But when that 50 turns, you know, it is a bullish thing. And so pay attention to that as well. And then just to show you how risk on we are, I mean, this is your grandpa's index, the Dow, um, which is divided into the Qs here. And you can see 2022, what was happening? Nobody wanted risk. They wanted your grandpa stocks. They were doing great, right? The Dow was doing great. And 2023 hit and boom, you can see everybody's all about risk. And you've seen the Dow stocks have been going down lately.
And if you're new here, please hit that subscribe button. Really appreciate it. And if you're getting anything out of this, please hit the like and think about sharing the video, guys. And so those are some things to watch out for. Again, short term right now, we're in this bullish trend up, and they say don't fight the trend. And, you know, we'll see what happens from here. But the one thing I want to talk about was, you know, some stunning things this morning, you know, came out and stuff. And one was the Jolt's job report, right? I mean, good Lord, look at this thing. This is what I'm talking about. It ends up actually going back up. And this is how many job openings there are, right? We're at 1.7. Now we got 1.9 jobs for every one person looking for a job. And I know people like to say, oh my God, people are working three jobs. This economy is horrible. Everything's so expensive. And, you know, to get paychecks. And the key word I keep telling you is jobs and paychecks. The fact that they can go out there and find three jobs. In 2019, you couldn't do that. If you want to, you know, like I'm telling the members, you want five jobs right now. You may not like them. You can go find them. I see plenty of help wanted signs out there. And that's just something you haven't been able to do in the past. Right. And so I don't care if they're working 10 jobs. I, mean, I hate it for them. But as long as they got those 10 paychecks coming in to keep paying off those credit cards, they keep running up. That's all that matters. It doesn't matter what the credit limit is or how much is going up and how much the saving rates come down. As long as the bills are getting paid and we are spending. And not only are we spending, right? Like it's 1999, these restaurants and vacations. Somebody sent this to me in the comments. Thank you very much. So I looked it up to fact check it. Look at this right here. This came out December 29th, 2022. Nevada sees another record year for gaming. Look at this. With the month of December yet to be recorded, the state's casinos have already broken the 2021 record performance it had. And what else happens? I told the members this morning. I'll keep them updated on this. Financial conditions loosened again. They did not tighten. They loosened again. Again, this ends on every Friday. It is updated every Wednesday at 8.30 a.m. The NFCI, right? And you can see when it started in loosening, it was October. That's when the market rally started. And it continues to loosen. So, you know, and there's Fed Powell. I'm sorry he's not happy about that. But again, that was the question he basically dodged with a political answer. Okay. And so the market said, great. You know, and so... Anyway, that but again, the, the, the gambling stuff, every, every time I come across, I don't know why I get shocked when I see this, but I'm like, that just lets you know, guys, how much money is still left out there, okay? And again, this is the job market's throwing everything off. The fact that we're able to save money by just putting it in a money market or a CD or even a bond and drawing between three to five and a half, six percent. So I was on my post yesterday, they got $400,000 sitting in a money market account drawing four percent. You know, every year, I forgot what, what they're pulling per month or whatever. But it's like covering their rent, you know. <laughs> so it's like, okay, you know, that's, yeah, I mean, how, how long has it been since you've been able to do that, right? And so that's, you can't take your credit out of the market fast at a faster pace than what they're trying to do because of that, right? And the fact that people just, they're keeping those jobs. And as Fed Powell said today, he said, models aren't working. Just as plain and simple, the models aren't working. It's a job market we've never seen before. We've never shut down the world. And so trying to predict what's happening, you know, and he did say they are seeing inflation come down. They used the word deflation a lot, by the way, and that also pumped the markets up. But deflation on the good side, it's the services side they're having a problem with. And they're just not seeing it. Right. And but they expect to see it. OK, but you just got to keep in mind the market is forward thinking. It is already trying to anticipate what the pause. Right. And then the cuts as well. And so that's what it's doing. And so that's why you're seeing even like, I mean, Good companies going up, just seeing just garbage companies that I'm surprised are still in business right now, going up even faster, which is kind of the, the weary side of this. You go, oh my goodness. And so, that, but that's where we're at. So, you know, let me know in the comments what you think and stuff about what he said today, all these reports, the fact we're gambling at record numbers right now. I mean, it's it's insane. So anyway, hope you got something out of it. Hit the like, subscribe if you did, and I will see you guys tomorrow. Yeah.